There's been loads of great riffs written on Gretsch guitars. Here's our top five. Hi, Sam from Guitar Village here. Recently, we've had some super rare Gretsches in which look very cool, like this one I have right here, the Broadcaster in Candy Apple Red Two-Tone. It's limited to one of six worldwide, and alongside it, we also have these incredibly rare and cool looking shell pink and sonic blue finishes. Having these great Gretsch guitars in got me thinking about some of the players that have used them over the years and got me thinking about learning some parts. I came up with about seven players, but to keep the list nice and tight, I decided to leave out George Harrison and Pete Townsend. Before we get started, let's have a look at some of the Gretsch history. In 1883, a young 27-year-old Fred Gretsch moved to Brooklyn, New York to set up a massive operation building banjos and percussion. By 1927, he decided to stretch out a bit and start building drum kits. The drums are still a big part of the Gretsch lineup. In 1939, they decided to stretch out a bit more and start building their first ever electric guitar, the Electromatic. By the early 50s, Gretsch endorsed Chet Atkins, an incredible player. And that brings us nicely on to our first riff. First up, Mr. Sandman. This is an incredible sounding piece and very tough to play. Chet's known for his finger style, utilizing chord tones with bass note movement and melody all in one. I started playing this way when I was a kid, because I didn't know any better. Ideally, we would have used this 59 6120 with Chet's name on it behind me, but we're going to save that for a later artist. I went with this guitar mainly because it's so playable and would be very forgiving and also as I knew I had to use this guitar a lot to practice the part, it's very comfortable to sit with having a smaller body. Next up, we're looking at Malcolm Young and Riff Raff. I chose this because normally you see Malcolm somewhere backstage near the drummer, no lights on him, playing some solid chord work, whereas this shows off some of his riff work, which we don't hear enough of. He would have been using something like a 63 Jet Firebird. Three pickups, cut back to two pickups, just looking at the bridge. I've read a little bit about, you know, him basically Frankensteining the one that he was given and turning it into his own, he obviously taking the paint off and pulling the pickups out and experimenting. He decided to make it his own. This is very close. It's a double cut 62 duo jet. It does have two pickups instead of the one, but I'm sure we can make do. It's a master built custom shop relic. So you've got the next worn in really nicely. You've got the aging on the back. And I love the horseshoe Bigsby arm on this. Thank you. 
Next up, we're looking at Sharp Dressed Man by ZZ Top. I love Billy Gibbons' style. The double stops are symbolic of some of his playing. You can hear it on Tush and a few other songs. And also, you've got to love the bit. Typically, you're going to see him using something like the Bo Diddley model, or maybe the Les Paul with the pin stripes around the top. As we don't have a Bo Diddley in stock, I had to make do with this. A Gretsch Custom Shop Master Built Relic Lake Placid Blue Sparkle Finish. This is a killer guitar. It sounds great. I could definitely see it as being something that Billy would have used and the Peyton Applied for TV Jones pickups are really going to capture the sound. So, now we're going to take a look at She Sells Sanctuary by The Cult. What I really love about Billy Duffy's playing on this is the use of a D7 chord, but instead of just going straight in and playing the chord, he outlines it with the open D string and a melody, and he also reinforces that with the use of delay to add some atmosphere. The White Falcon was taken along to one of the mid-50s NAMM shows by Gretsch. They just wanted to show off what they could do. They weren't particularly thinking about releasing it as a production model. When customers went crazy for this, they had to put it into production and it's been one of their most popular models. It looks great and I can see why people went crazy for it then. Billy is very much a big fan of this guitar and what's interesting about this particular White Falcon I have here is that Billy has actually played it. Right, we're going to take a look at Stray Cat Struck by the Stray Cats, and I think this song is a great snapshot of what Brian Setzer has to offer. Kind of almost everything in his arsenal in just one song, um, from those kind of complex chord voicings, some subtle playing, double stops, and some really interesting lead lines as well. I remember being played this from a, a young age by my dad, maybe about 12, 13, when I was learning guitar. He came home one day with this VHS of Brian Setzer had like the tab on it and everything so you could learn some of the parts. I was never going to learn this stuff back then. And what I really love about it now is that I can play a few of these bits as I've developed as a player, which is very rewarding. That's why it makes it very personal to me. Earlier I was talking about not using this guitar for Mr. Sandman, which it would have been ideal for. Um, however, I wanted to save it for doing Brian Setzer because he actually used a 1959 6120 just like this one. He had the Black Cat sticker on there and some dice knobs which look very cool. There's our top five Gretsch riffs. If you think we missed any out that we should have put in there, please write in the comments below. We're also going to have the links in the description for these super rare one of six to each colour guitars. They are very rare so we think they're going to sell out fast, so get in quick if you fancy one. If you like these videos and would like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and give us a like playing and you can hear it in songs like Tush. I love his beard. For fuck's sake. I love his beard. I love his beard. I just love it. <laughs>